Okay. Gods, deities, celestials, Asgardians, perennial beings, cosmic entities, star giants, whatever they prefer to be called, they are powerful. Not only are these beings powerful, but there are a plethora of them within the many universes of Marvel, who exist both on screen and in comic book pages. With a long list of gods, good and bad alike, flexing their ego the living planets, more often than not, join me as we discover who precisely is the most powerful cosmic god in all of Marvel. We start off our list with literally the god of the moon and vengeance. And the god Khonshu. Yeah, and somehow it only gets more cosmic and powerful from here. Khonshu, unable to enter Earth's plane on his own, is an ancient Egyptian deity that empowers human avatars to do his earthly bidding. Not always on the side of good, but inclined to help save the world, Khonshu has enthralled many of Moon Knights over the last few millennia. Most famous of whom, Mark Spector and Stephen Grant, are in a constant battle with one another over control of their body, which Khonshu seems to relish in the chaos. The vastness of Khonshu's powers remains somewhat unknown. Although it is possible to damage him, he is incredibly long-lived and immune to aging or disease. Under a full moon, he has not only stripped heroes of their powers, but has used them for himself. Khonshu has become the Iron Fist, the Ghost Rider, and the Sorcerer Supreme. He has even used the Odin Force to make Thor look like a fool, though I'm not sure that was too hard to do. Right. Although all Asgardians are technically cosmic beings and gods to some degree, there is all but one who sits above the rest, possessing powers befitting of a king. Father of Thor, ruler of Asgard and wielder of not only the Odin Force but other enchanted weaponry, Odin has proven himself a formidable off-world god and warrior. With unmatched wisdom and a plethora of exceptional feats performed during his long lifetime including cataclysmic battles and foreboding future events, Odin has also fought alongside the Stone Age Avengers all the way back in 1 million BC and helped subdue a celestial called Zagreb, the Sorrower. He's even healed fellow Asgardian Baldur the Brave from the brink of termination. Go Odin Force! Belonging to no particular vessel, the Phoenix Force is a fiery cosmic entity that predates darkness. Edgy. As one of the oldest and most feared entities in all of Marvel comic books, the Phoenix Force has the ability to freely roam space as cosmic energy or bond itself to selected hosts. Preferring telepaths and telekinetics, the Phoenix Force has also bonded with a handful of other mutants and metahumans. As most notably seen with Jean Grey, the Phoenix Force can cause even the most powerful minds to go completely mad once enveloped. Capable of destroying entire planets and even worse, the Phoenix Force actually possesses its own realm that serves as an afterlife known as the White Hot Room. Currently contained within the mind and body of Echo, the Phoenix Force continues to condemn the unworthy. As far as the MCU, do you think they'll introduce the Phoenix Force in the Disney Plus Echo series? Or will the third time be the charm for Jean Grey and the X-Men? Do you like the Juggernaut? Yeah, well, he's not on this list. But the most militant and evil of all demonic entities, Sidorak, certainly is. How are these two things related? Well, let me catch you up. Sidorak, one eighth of the magical Octessence beings, competed against his seven counterparts in the Wager of Octessence. Clever name. Essentially, they each created a gem, which were all hidden in different locations on Earth. The first men to touch each gem would be dubbed exemplars, while also gaining all the power of whichever Octessence's gem they found. Simple, right? So, Kane Marco, stepbrother of Professor Charles Xavier, found the Crimson Gem of Sidorak, which transformed him into the unstoppable Juggernaut. You'd probably think with all of the destruction the Juggernaut has caused on his own over the years that Sidorak would qualify for this list simply based off that. But Sidorak is much more powerful, with even Mephisto acknowledging his position as the Underworld's most demonic. Trapped in a pocket dimension by magical forces in hopes of keeping him and his destruction at bay, Sidorak is one of the more underrated cosmic gods on our list. Said to be the most powerful being in the galaxy, Uatu the Watcher doesn't even crack the top 10 on our list, and that's saying something. Hey, wait, where are you going? The most familiar of the Watchers and star of Marvel's What If series on Disney Plus, Uatu possesses the same omniscient powers as the rest of his race. We've seen this before. Immortality, interdimensionality, and multiversal travel on a whim, if it wasn't for Uatu's vow of non-interference, there may not have ever been a need for the Avengers. It cannot be an easy life knowing what every other sentient life form is thinking at all times. Uatu is so powerful that he has the ability to choose to perish, go to the afterlife, and then choose to live again. Choices, choices. Uatu the Watcher could quite possibly be one of the most powerful cosmic forces in the entire Marvel Universe. Unlike Uatu, however, this is something we may never know. 
One day, you're just a regular old humanoid called Galen, living on your paradise of a homeworld, Ta. The next day, you're fusing with the sentience of the cosmos in order to survive the collapse of the sixth incarnation of the multiverse. You know, Tuesday stuff. Joking aside, this is more or less the origin story of Galactus. A cosmic being that hungers for and feeds on energy found in planets, Galactus also possesses the power cosmic, which he uses to empower his heralds, such as the Silver Surfer, who then proceed to scout worlds deemed worthy of consumption. Literally the sentience of a no longer existing universe, Galactus may be one of the most terrifying cosmic entities in the history of Marvel Comics. Popular with book readers and moviegoers alike, there seems to be a calling online for Galactus to be the next Thanos-level threat for Earth's mightiest heroes in the MCU. Personally, I'm just excited to see Galactus again on the big screen, provided he's nothing like the version we saw in Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. Eldritch deity and creator of the symbiotes. We can all thank Null for the likes of iconic villains such as Venom, Carnage, and even Gore the God Butcher. Oh God, will die. Minding his own business, contempt in his void of darkness, Null was awoken from a slumber by the Celestials and their light of creation. Enraged, Null created the first symbiote in the form of All Black, the Necrosword, using it to vanquish one of the cosmic giants. After refining his blade utilizing the divine force of the Celestial's severed skull, and waging war against the Light, Null found himself stranded on a desolate planet, which he inhabited by creating our favorite amorphous parasites. Cute. With Null hell-bent on destroying and corrupting anything good, it's crazy to think that such an ancient and evil force wouldn't be a problem if those pesky good guys were just minding their own business for once. How dare they try and create the seventh iteration of the cosmos? At least we got one good thing out of it in Spider-Man's black suit, though. Well, maybe that wasn't always so good either. Once an elder god of Earth who degenerated into an evil and demonic entity, Chathan used the godly powers to create a book called the Darkhold, the Book of Sins. The Darkhold is indestructible and contains all of Chathan's evil works and spells, which he uses to influence some of the strongest life forms in all of the Marvel Universe. With the Darkhold being featured so prominently in the MCU, most notably in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, you have to suspect that we'll be seeing Chathan on our screens sooner than later. The originator of chaos magic, Chathan is able to manipulate nature, turn people into stone, and even resurrect corpses to be used as henchmen. By looking directly at his true form's face, people have literally melted in fear, and the realm he resides in is said to inflict pain beyond pain once entered. Could Chathan be the one manipulating Elizabeth Olsen's Wanda Maximoff this whole time? Kronos, a brilliant scientist and ruler of the Eternals of Earth, was caught in a cosmic catastrophe when an explosion in his laboratory destroyed his physical body and home planet, Titanos. Luckily for Kronos, his mind amalgamated with time and space, transforming him into a powerful cosmic entity. Considered the bodiless embodiment of time, Kronos has the ability to manipulate inanimate matter and even control the souls of deceased mortals. Not necessarily a good guy, Kronos is not considered a villain either. He's often on the side of peace, as shown in past battles with his brother Uranos. Furthermore, he's had a long-running connection with the mad titan Thanos. Technically, he's the grandfather of Thanos, who was only conceived with his scientific aid. With all these connections that have also been made inside the MCU, perhaps sooner than later we'll get to see some family feud on TV. The first two of the four cornerstones of the universe, death and eternity, sit directly across from each other on the spatial axis. Complete opposites of one another, death is driven by the end, feeding off of the souls of those that have passed. Eternity is the manifestation of the everlasting universe itself. Because of this, he is bound cosmically to the core of every other universe in the multiverse. To sum it up, one is the embodiment of space and time, while the other embodies the end of it. Death, with the ability to bend reality to her will, enjoys manipulating Thanos on a regular basis. Relying on the Mad Titan to do her bidding, which in turn sustains and increases her power, Thanos is avidly in love with death, and she couldn't care less about him. Now I'm no relationship expert, but it seems like those two may be toxic for each other, and the universe. Yikes. Eternity, on the other hand, stays relatively inactive and is only manifested when the universe is in imminent danger. Brother and sister of death and eternity respectively, Oblivion and Infinity also sit across from each other on the spatial axis. The other two pillars of the four cornerstones of the universe, Oblivion and Infinity, rank one spot higher on our list because they've both done more OP stuff than their counterparts. Simple enough. Oblivion is the god of the void and nothingness. Infinity, much like her brother Eternity, is the embodiment of the entire Marvel Universe. 
Though able to act separately, Infinity and Eternity are entwined cosmically as one. Much like his sister Death, Oblivion prefers to keep his hands clean. Unlike his sister, he prefers controlling avatars like the Inhuman Maelstrom, as opposed to manipulating supervillains into doing his bidding. Oblivion manifested an aspect of himself, a demon called the Chaos King, who destroyed over 98% of the entire multiverse. Infinity, much like her brother and even more so, stays inactive unless the universe is in dire distress. She also once defeated Oblivion's avatar Maelstrom. Unlike her brother Eternity, Thanos never captured Infinity. Therefore, even though they are essentially one with each other, Infinity gets the nod in our rankings. Just makes sense. Just trust me. Known as the Universal Scale of Justice and the personification of multiversal law, the Living Tribunal's three voices act as a representative for the one above all. Surpassed by few and the answer to everything, the Tribunal's function is to protect the multiverse from imbalances and mystical forces. He serves as the final judge for matters involving cosmic beings. Unlike almost every other entry in our rankings, the Living Tribunal has no other alternate counterparts in any other universes, yet he's able to exist simultaneously in multiple universes at once. The Tribunal is such an incredible force, he has even crossed over outside of the Marvel Universe and into the DC Universe, teaming up with the Spectre to save both universes from destruction. Now that's a lot of universes. Now I know you're probably thinking, haven't Celestials been defeated by virtually everybody else on this list so far? Well, they have. However, Celestials have existed since the beginning of multiple timelines and throughout multiple universes. They've existed in many shapes and forms, with many godlike specialties and powers to behold. As natural order would have things, some beings are destined to ascend above their equals. And that's no different with these two cosmic star giants. Debates have raged online for a decade over who's more powerful, Hiamat the Dreaming Celestial or Skathan the Approver. Though you could make an argument for either candidate. There are a few things we know for certain. Both are without question the strongest of all the Celestials. Although lacking many feats on paper, Skathan has shown incredible power levels by disapproving the protege after she posed a true threat to the Living Tribunal. Skathan restrained protege with ease and saved the multiverse. Tiamat's feats, on the other hand, are well documented. Not only was Uatu the Watcher unable to see anything when Tiamat first awoke, but Galactus himself was fearful to hear Tiamat was coming for him. Furthermore, Tiamat has ascended and has been acknowledged as an equal to the next entry on our ranked list. To begin to explain the Fulcrum is somewhat of a challenge, as his existence poses more questions than provides closure. The last stop for Celestials after they pass away, or are destined for reincarnation, the Fulcrum is a mysterious deity that welcomes slain or ascended cosmic gods inside of a bar. Yes, like a bar, with drinks. Why he's serving beverages, and whether he's even his own entity, or is some sort of an aspect or avatar speaking on behalf of the one above all, remains unknown. What is known, however, is that the Fulcrum is full of wisdom and answer. An omnipotent and omniscient entity, positioned as the one the Celestials answer to, the only other being in the multiverse acknowledged as an equal to the Fulcrum has been Tiamat. Ascending above every Celestial that came before him, Tiamat was able to question the Fulcrum who deemed him more than a Celestial, and asked him the final question, will you come with me? Said to be an homage to Jack Kirby, and even using the alias Jack in his Cosmic Tavern, the Fulcrum is either incredibly powerful or is one in the same with the number one ranked Cosmic God on our list. God, the one, number one, top ranked pound for pound the cream of the crop. <laughs> Not only the most OP cosmic god in the entire Marvel Universe, but the one above all is just that, above all. The only being that the living tribunal answers to, and the ultimate source of love and good, the one above all can create or alter life on a whim. They have seldom revealed themselves to anyone, only appearing in the form of a man in which they spoke to Peter Parker about the acceptance of death as a part of life. They are able to manifest a dark entity known as the One Below All, which serves as a counterweight in the cycle of death and rebirth. Allowing their creatures and nature to play its course regardless of the outcome, the One Above All even chose to sit back while Marvel's Prime Universe was fully destroyed. After deliberation with Thanos, the One Above All decided it was best to recreate the universe, which they did at the snap of a finger. Well, maybe I made that last part up for symmetry. Nonetheless. Thought to be an homage to the late Stan Lee, not only is the one above all unmatched in power and knowledge, they are the beginning and end of any and everything. And that concludes our ranked list of the most powerful Marvel Cosmic Gods. What was your favorite entry? Did we miss anyone? Do you agree with our rankings? 
Comment your thoughts below and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more cosmic comic book content. Thanks for watching.